In this video, we will discuss polyprotic acids and how to solve problems that have polyprotic acids in them. And so a polyprotic acid um, is one that has multiple hydrogens that can dissociate. And a clue for that is like, for example, H2SO4. I see two H's out in front, and so uh, I could have two H's that dissociate. But the key is, is that each hydrogen dissociates one at a time. Okay, and it's important to know that. So this will first break apart and it'll give me one H plus, and whatever is left over, that'll be HSO4, the minus one charge. And then um, HSO4 can go back and dissociate into H plus plus SO4, two minus. And what's important is I get uh, a Ka for both of them. But there's specifically, we could call this Ka1 because that was the first hydrogen that was dissociated. And then we could call this Ka2 because this was the second hydrogen that was dissociated. So what we end up with is um, multiple Ka. So for example, I have H3PO4 down here. Um, and what you see is that based on the magnitude, it becomes increasingly more difficult for H's to be plucked off. Um, and so after one is removed, it becomes even more difficult to remove another. So when I'm asked to calculate the pH of H3O, H3PO4, there's a lot of math that is involved here. I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you the math. But um, good thing is we've got a little trick that will help us out. But not only am I getting the first H, I'll get a second H and then a third H. And so I'll have to do a little bit of math that I don't necessarily love to do. But let's first set this up. And you'll want to write kind of small on this one. H3PO4 plus HOH will give me um, H2PO4 with the 1 minus charge plus H3O plus 1. Those will all be aqueous except uh, for water. And I can set up a rice table. And with my rice table, I know that H3PO4 is 0 0.00301 minus X, 0, 0.000 minus X. Water is just uh, an X because it's a pure liquid. 0, 0 plus X plus X, X, and X. And so I can set up a Ka expression. I can use Ka here because I did produce H3O uh, plus 1. And it's always a good idea to write your Ka expression because on the AP test, you will get a point for just doing that. And we get x squared divided by, oops, I forgot a 1 there, 0 0.0001 minus x. And that equals, for this reaction, that'll be this first Ka. That'll be 7.5 times 10 to the minus third. We can simplify this a little bit, get rid of minus x. And um, when I solve for x, x is 8.66 times 10 to the minus four. Okay, and I could plug that in and get the pH, however, what ends up happening is now we have H2PO4 with a one minus charge and it can react with water. And what that can do is that can produce HPO4 with a two minus charge plus another H3O plus one. And um, I can set up a rice table the initial concentration of H2PO4, I can get that from up here. So this is like a stepwise process. That is just X, and X was 8.66 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, let me fill out the initials first before I get rolling. The initial concentration of HPO4 2 minus is 0, and then the initial concentration of H3O plus 1, that is also X because I just had some H3O. Uh, plus 1, so that is 8.66 times 10 to the minus 4. 
The reaction does shift right because I don't have any HPO4 two minus, and at equilibrium I have to have some of everything. So this will be minus x plus x plus x. So what will end up happening is we'll get a little bit more acidic because we're adding even more to our already uh, 8.66 times 10 to minus 4 H plus, and so I'll get 8.66 times 10 to minus 4 minus x. I get x, and I get 8.66 times 10 to the minus 4 plus x. I can write a K expression. Ka is equal to HPO4 2 minus H3O plus 1, dividing it by H2PO4 minus 1. So this equals x times 8.66 times 10 to the minus 4 plus x divided by 8.66 times 10 to the minus 4 minus x. That all equals Ka for this second dissociation. So that's 6.2 times 10 to the minus 8. And I can use the 5% rule, and I can get rid of minus x and plus x, so long as there is an x remaining, which there is. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then I can also see that these divided by uh, 8.66 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by itself will just be 1, and so that'll cancel out here. So I'm left with just that x. This math was not so bad. x is just equal to 6.2 times 10 to the minus 8. So what I'm going to do is right now I could go one more step and do the third dissociation, but I want to show you something with um, how these dissociations work. If I were to get the pH right now after only two dissociations, what I would do is I would say pH equals the negative log of H plus or H3O plus. And I have an H plus there and I have an H plus there. So if I add up 8.66 times 10 to the minus 4 and I add to it 6.2 times 10 to the minus 8, mathematically, unless I want to go out a whole bunch of sig figs, this is still, you can plug it into your calculator to prove it to yourself, this is still 8.66 times 10 to the minus 4. And so the pH is negative log uh, 8.66 times 10 to the minus 4, which I can estimate it's going to be a little bit less than 4. And my calculator tells me that the pH is 3.06, and I've solved the question. So what this set of notes is trying to prove is that mathematically, the removal of the second or third protons in a Ka value, they're just, in their Ka values, they're just insignificant. And so even if you have a polyprotic acid, you don't have to do anything special. Just do the first Ka because we just proved this Ka, this should be a 2, and this Ka 3 is going to be so much smaller when we solve for H plus that mathematically, unless we go out a whole bunch of sig figs, it's just going to be insignificant. Okay, so AP will tend to give you a whole bunch of Ka values just to confuse you, but just ignore anything that is not the first Ka value.